Hey guys, it's your boy, Ballface8020, back again with another great commentary. This one's going to be a real ramble, so bear with me, because I, I don't really know where I'm going with this, so I'm going to you know, have to kind of figure out my direction on the fly. Um, before we start, um, I got to say that the third episode of Talk Tua is an improvement like it's still horrible it's still like noticeably worse than fresh in the fit but it's better than the first two were um in fact i didn't actually see the episode itself per se but i saw like some reaction videos to it and i would say that the reaction videos were worse than the the worse than the podcast itself now granted you know that's you know not really a fair comparison because that's them like going on for, you know, 10 minutes of editing versus like just the full, you know, the full thing going through, you know, having to sit down and watch it, I'm sure it would be unbearable. But um, one thing that I, they did that I really liked is in the, um, this third episode, the, the change, you remember how I said like in that video, like how the talk to a podcast should have worked? They pretty much put all of those all of those changes I talked about. They did in this one. They got a new setup, like you know. Although I didn't mention anything about that, and they got rid of that guy. Oh, great idea! And they did leave Chelsea on. And some people are hating on on Chelsea. She seems fine to me. I, I'd actually say she's a little less annoying than uh, Haley's the main girl's name, right? Than Haley herself. Um, the I, the guest they got was somebody who I'd never heard of, um, like a, some, uh, you know, another you know, female comedian, you know, middle aged female comedian who, yeah, um, but who wasn't as obnoxious or as gross as the previous one. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's still terrible. Like nobody should listen to it. It was garbage. It sounds like it's still getting just ripped apart in you know their own comment section. But, but I mean, they're trying. You know, they're at least they're at least working with it. Oh, and that's another thing, though. This time it's clearly scripted. Like, you know, it's like it's like they're they're they're, they're you can tell from the, the edits. They're editing it after the fact they're making. It's it's not trying to they're not trying to do a flowing conversation because she can't do it. And instead, they're giving her the like questions in advance, giving her the lines. And it, it's a way better. It's like a dramatic improvement over the first two. Um, so, I mean, I'm not going to tell you to go watch the whole thing. But watch some of the reactions to it where they showed it. And you'll, I think you'll see there's been a massive improvement from episode two. Even episode two wasn't as bad as episode one. But from episode two to, to three. So we'll see if this keeps going, you know. He, uh, okay. So um, what I wanted to talk about tonight was rollerblading. Uh, because it's so... I don't think there's anything more early mid nineties than rollerblading. Like it was like such a cultural thing. And the reason that I want to talk about, I mean, and it was so like in that era. And then like, you know, like you have this like massive thing that was everywhere. You, you guys are mostly younger, so you don't remember it. And I'm not, I can't really think of any other equivalents of this in all of American or even world history where you have this thing that is massive. It's, everywhere like in all age groups it's like a big deal for like this period of you know five years and then it just completely vanishes so so anyway the, the background with rollerblading if you're not familiar with it basically it came the roller skating had been around forever but these guys who were i think they were brothers who were uh you know, had gone into a skate shop and they saw like some, I guess what would have been a primitive inline skate. And that inspired, so I don't know where, who, who knows where that came from. But uh, that inspired them like to come up with the idea like, well, wait a minute, you know, we're, we're just hockey players, you know, playing in the off season. That would be perfect for like training, like off season training when you don't have access to ice anymore. So they went and built their own 
and they called and they they started their own company called Rollerblade. And I think today, I don't know if today they're ma they're more just called inline skates. In the '90s, nobody called them that. In the '90s, everybody called them Rollerblades, whether the whether they were made by the Rollerblade company or not. In fact, I'm not even sure I knew Rollerblade was a company, and I was really into it. But anyway, these things were, uh, they were like, like, they were so big, and I think the first real main, like, I mean, technically they were getting big in the 80s, they were already getting big in the 80s, but the first time I really remember seeing, like, a mainstream thing about them was this early 90s movies called Airborne, and which is a very forgettable film, although it does feature a young Seth Green and a young Jack Black. And it's interesting when you watch it. Uh, the last time I saw it would, would have actually been in around the year 2001, I believe. It may have even been 2002. So it would have been like a decade after it came out. And it was weird watching it. And the end, like, those were the only guys who went on to have any kind of career. But there's just like... In, I, I don't remember how I felt at the time watching it, but in hindsight, like, their charisma was just, like, so much greater than, and I don't even like Seth Green. Jack Black I do kind of like, but the, uh, so much greater than everybody else in the film, who's just, like, I don't think any of them went on to be in anything. Um, but anyway, so that film, um, this film Airborne is about this, uh, he's a surfer, but he also rollerblades because it's like it was it was it was more of a West Coast thing back then. Uh, you're talking about the very early '90s. Uh, it was spreading, but it was like really big on the West Coast. So, so he was a surfer, but he also rollerbladed. And um, but he's surfer first and foremost, like a throwback to the skateboarders of the '70s. But his he's an only child. His parents get some grant to go study in Australia, but they can't bring him with them. So, uh, they say, you've got it. You can't live here, you know, by yourself. You're only 16. And by the way, all this shit is retarded. Why wouldn't he have been able to go to Australia with them? And why couldn't he live by himself for six months? I think he could handle it. <laughs> but they say, so you got to go to Cleveland to live with your, to live with your aunt and uncle. Okay. So, but in, in Cleveland, you know, the thing is he can't surf in Cleveland. So rollerblading, but hey, but, and then, and then the climactic thing of the film is, uh, you know, this rollerblading race. And uh, so, like, in the early 90s, that's kind of, like, what, like, you know, rollerblading was for those things. It was for hockey or, like, th that was what, what aggressive or uh, they called it, like, aggressive or street rollerblading was. It wasn't doing tricks. It was, like, going down hills. Mm -hmm. Going down hills and jumping stairs and stuff. Like, I don't recall there being any grinding in the movie. I'm not sure it existed. I'm not sure. I mean, it, the skateboard grinding existed then, but I don't think that uh, rollerblading grinding did. But anyway, so um, I got my first pair of rollerblades when I was, you know, I'm going to be totally honest with you. I'm not sure. I, I, I can't remember if it was fourth grade or fifth grade. Like it... Hmm. Third, third grade, fourth grade, or fifth grade. I really don't think it was third grade. It may have been fourth grade or fifth grade. I, I don't remember. But for me, you know, at that time of my life, you know, that age, it was probably for in grade school from, you know, kids go through different sports that they're into. There was certainly a time that I was really into football and um, then baseball but the one that in grade school that I was the most into was hockey. I would say that I think I know I think there was a break in there somewhere, but for most of second through fifth grade, I wanted to be a professional hockey player when I grew up. And I was really good. Like um like I'm not good enough to be a professional, but I was really good. I played all the time. I played for hours every day. When we played street hockey, I was dominant. I dominated floor hockey, you know, in our grade school classes. Um, because I played all the time, you know, I was just, I, that was like, that was, it was my life, but that's why I wanted rollerblades was to play roller hockey. 
And, you know, I, I maybe I could fit this in better, like, towards with flow of the story. But I, this is one thing that interests me is we played so much roller hockey as kids. And I will still see kids outside today playing pickup football. I will never see them playing roller hockey, probably because they don't have rollerblades. But you would think that they would at least still get rollerblades for roller hockey. But, but the thing, anyway, where I'm going with this is that the reason I wanted rollerblades was not to rollerblade. It was to play inline hockey, you know, to, you know, to practice inline hockey. And um, I think that's where most guys were. I think that's where most, uh, I mean, girls rollerbladed too, but usually not to play hockey. But I, I think that's where most guys were at the time that, you know, I was in grade school. So this would have been, this would have been like, you know, a couple years after that Airborne movie came out. Because I didn't, I didn't see that Airborne film when it came out in theaters. Didn't have any interest in it. Didn't know much about rollerblading at the time. Also, I think I was only in like first grade. Or I would, you know, it was, it would have been a little too old for me. I saw it a few years later at a sleepover party. And I, I like, I, I liked it at the time. I mean, you know, it's stupid, but for that age group, it's, it's good. And, um, although by that time I already had rollerblades and I remember it inspired me to go start doing stupid rollerblading shit. Like, cause I already had the rollerblades like going down hills and I, I, I would go out, I think that next weekend and get kind of hurt doing something really dumb because they, I mean, it's a miracle that I survived. Cause like when you're a kid, you see these stupid things and like, you don't have the common sense to realize, like, oh, that's not a good idea to try that. Whatevs. Um, so anyway, again, for the 8 millionth time, I wanted them to play roller hockey. I think that's where most people were. But we played roller hockey all the time. I mean, pretty much every day after school. I don't know what kids do after school now. And, you know, and then when we weren't playing, I would, I would be, um, like, you know, there was, like, a park nearby where frequently on the weekends I'd go and I'd get a, you know, I'd have my hockey stick and I'd get a tennis ball because I didn't always have, uh, you know, like a hockey roller ball. Or, uh, although sometimes, sometimes I don't know, I usually didn't have one. I usually just grabbed a tennis ball because my dad was a tennis player. So there were always tennis balls around. And I'd go and, um, you know, I would just, I would just, you know, practice. I'd just be, I'd be able to go out there and just play for hours. I wish I, I wish I could have fun like that today. But, um, yeah, so the, um, that's what it was for me, you know, and for most people. Then, you know, things really started to change when we all got to middle school, so sixth grade. And there's definitely, for me, I, I think for most people, it was a real transition time, you know, in my life, at least, because... I know by fifth grade, you're starting to notice the change, but like by, you know, sixth grade is, I mean, it's just a totally different world, you know, like, cause you know, now, you know, you like, it's five elementary schools combined into one, you're growing up. There's, for me, that's the first time I really had any real interest in girls, you know, in sixth grade and stuff. And also the whole concept of popularity, like, like in, um, in grade school, like, yeah, I mean, maybe you had some kids who were considered cool, but mostly it was like your coolness was determined by how good an athlete you were and how could you do could do in like the recess stuff. But in, there wasn't really a, you know, cool kids, not cool kids thing. And in middle school, there was it was just it was just a completely different world. And one thing that was really popular with the the male cool kids in middle school was aggressive rollerblading, you know, aggressive or, or street skating, which is like not using rollerblading for hockey or, um, uh, you know, just skating around, which was, you know, which, which and it was big, like, it's like, it was big for, from those things, you know, obviously, but using them to do like tricks and stuff. And it was like, there was, uh, I think this is when the X Games started. And when the X Games started, the biggest thing in it was rollerblading, which isn't even in it anymore. And, um, so that was the, um, like, so the, all the cool kids rollerbladed 
I mean, not I, mean, I rollerbladed too, but all the cool kids were into like aggressive inline skating. But just like the cool kids, like somehow managed to always magically get like the cool clothes that, you know, I couldn't get until like a year later when they were out of style. The cool kids also somehow all had, you know, uh, trick skates is what we call them. The like, or like skates that were designed for street rollerblading. I still had these uh, skates for, um, you know, for street hockey. They were hockey skates. They were hockey rollerblade skates, which is, of course, what I wanted because that's what the main reason I got it was to play uh, play hockey. And um, so I was really into it for, like, it wasn't, at least not explicitly, it wasn't something like, oh, the cool kids are doing this, so I want to do it. Like, but, I mean, it's pretty obvious to me in hindsight that that is what it was. Like, in my own head, I just thought, like, oh, this is really, this is something I'm really interested in. And it absolutely, it, it is something that I would have been into even if nobody else was into it, like, at that time. But it was, like, seeing the cool kids do it is what got me into it and is what made me made me want to do it. And then, yeah, the interest took on a life of its own. It even became, like, an obsession. But, I. Uh, but, I mean, that doesn't stop. Like, that's where the initial interest came from. And, uh... So, like, my best friend and I... My best friend at the time... You know, we, like... And, and really, pretty much every guy in our grade... We rollerbladed everywhere. We didn't, like... You, you didn't really, like, back then, in that year or sixth grade... You generally didn't ride your bike places. You just rollerbladed. In fact, I remember that spring rollerblading to school. Not riding my bike to school. Rollerblading to school a couple of times. I remember one Saturday. Maybe it was a Saturday or Sunday afternoon. I don't remember. It could have even been a weekday. I don't think so. That same friend I mentioned, we were walking. And this high school kid comes past us on a skateboard. And then my buddy says to me, Last of a dying breed. And, 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 you know, we just chuckled over it because we thought that, like, skateboarders were such losers. And, um, like, and usually if you said the skaters, you, you were talking about the skateboarders, not, not rollerbladers. Um, so, yeah, so I, um, sorry. I was, uh, yeah, so super, super into it, and, uh, but, you know, like, again, I didn't really have the right skates for it. I had these, these, um, these hockey skates, and on top of that, the ones I had, because remember, I was only in sixth grade, and I was, this was pre-growth spurt, so my feet were still pretty small, so the, the ones that I had only had three wheels, you know, whereas most rollerblades would have four wheels, so if you were going to grind on rollerblades, you would just get to these things called grind plates and then you would grind between the middle two wheels. And obviously I couldn't do that because, you know, you'd have to, I mean, in hindsight, it's pretty obvious. I could have just done, done it like one, one side with the, in between the first and the second and then the other side in between the second and the third. It might've actually even been easier. Uh, I'm not, although I'm not sure if the wheels would have been tight enough, but anyway, you, but anyway, you know, I wasn't, I'm not very creative in those types of things. So, yeah, and then what happened is um, summer came and still into rollerblading, but there was this one weekend at the end of the summer where I had to go down uh, with my dad to stay at my grandparents for a weekend. I, I'm not sure what the occasion was. I, I don't remember why I had to be there. So for whatever reason, I didn't want to bring my rollerblades there. I'm not sure why, but since I had nothing else to do and I had no interest in skateboarding, but I did still have a skateboard that had been bought for me the previous year back in fifth grade. And, uh, so I brought the skateboard with me just because it'll give me something to do while I'm down there. You know, I'm going to be, I don't know anybody. It's just like, you know, it's, you know, this sort of quasi urban area. There's nothing to do. So in the downtime that I have there, just tool around on the skateboard. And so I didn't know how to do anything with the skateboard. And uh, so I'm just like that there skating. And then this guy comes, guy probably in his early 20s, maybe mid 20s. He sees me skating and he's like, oh, hey, yo, I used to do that. Can I try? And so he was, we were just talking while he was skating around. And then, you know, he did some tricks. And one of the things he did was Ollie. 
And I was like, well, how do you do that? How do you do that? And then he showed me how to do it. So for the rest of that weekend, I was just practicing those ollies. And the more I did it, I was like, I I was starting to really like it. And, you know, uh, you know, so then I came back by the time we came back to school, I didn't have an interest in rollerblading anymore. It was still the cool kids were still doing it. But it was like I had lost interest. I was still interested in skating, just not rollerblading. So I would just skateboard. Uh, The problem was I wasn't really any good. uh, There was no YouTube to do tutorials back then. I didn't have any skateboarder friends. But I also think that the, I also think that I just didn't have enough talent. I think that like, you know, for, cause for somebody who did it as much as me, I never successfully landed a kickflip. And this, I'm, this is talking like months of skating to never successfully land a kickflip. I think I might have done a frontside grab once. I never managed to grind because I couldn't I couldn't ollie to get on the ledge. Every time I tried to ollie to get on the ledge, I couldn't land it. I couldn't even ollie down a three step staircase. Every t- I couldn't land it. I couldn't land it. Uh, I could ollie pretty high. I could ollie like... I'm not sure what my record was, but I wouldn't be surprised if it was like near two feet. Um, but uh, that was pretty much... That was it. I mean, I couldn't... Like I said, I couldn't do, couldn't do anything else. And I tried a lot. I mean, I practiced really hard all the time. Uh, and I just couldn't do it. So like, yeah, maybe if I had instruction, I could have done better. I don't think so. I think if you're doing it that often and you're still not improving, that you just don't have what it takes. That's that's my guess. I don't know. What do I know? But anyways, uh, so I was really into skateboarding then. I was doing it for a while. But then something happened, and I didn't really think about it at the time, but sometime in seventh grade... Wait, was it seventh? Yeah, it was seventh grade. Sometime in seventh grade, rollerblading stopped being cool. And it became about, in fact, this was pretty early in seventh grade now that I think about it. The uh, rollerblading started to lose its, um, like, it just, I don't know, all of a sudden everybody lost interest in it. And now the new thing was biking, was, was, was aggressive street BMX, street BMX. And at first I was just like, I was going to just, you know, stick with the skateboarding thing. But then again, and yet, if it wasn't for you know, the fact that the cool kids were doing the BMX, then I, yeah, I would I would have gone to that. But uh, I, I wouldn't have gone to that. But the same type of thing. It gave me really interest. So I lost interest. That's how I ended up losing interest in skateboarding. I went over to BMX, and then that eventually faded out too. Whatever. But um, so I never really thought about much about rollerblading after that. But you know, I can see in hindsight, and certainly this isn't a novel observation that rollerblading could just kind of ended everywhere that year like you know and um it uh it just kind of faded it just kind of like it wasn't even faded, like like so dramatic it didn't well it, it dramatically stopped being like this major thing it was still there and then it stopped being cool like all the i mean it was it was no the fad was kind of over but then it just kind of disappeared and because, you know, like, when I was, like, so, like, that year, sixth grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade, like I said before, yeah, I was doing the roller hockey, so was every other kid, and then in sixth grade, I got into the street skating, that, you saw that all over the place, too, but it goes beyond that, you would just see people, again, of all ages, middle-aged people and older, on rollerblades, everywhere, and then all of a sudden you you go and I didn't notice it at the time, and all of a sudden you don't see them anywhere, ever. And um so I was thinking about like, you know, like why that is, what happened, and you know, because I was I've been thinking about that for a while, but I just recently saw a video about it or talking about like what happened to World of Reading, what why did it die? And one thing they were saying is it just became, like, uncool. I think there was even a part on the Joe Rogan podcast where he said what killed roller... Either he or a guest said, you know, what killed rollerblading was this joke that said, like, what's the hardest part of being a rollerblader? Telling your parents that you're gay. And he's like, he's like yeah, that, that ended rollerblading. It made it uncool. No, 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 I disagree. By that joke, by the time that joke was widely spread... 
rollerblading had already, it, it hadn't just become uncool, it had become irrelevant. That's the thing is, I don't ever remember rollerblading becoming, like, skateboarding during the rollerblading era was seen as uncool to an extent. But I don't ever remember rollerblading being seen as uncool. Just, like, just irrelevant. And, um, so anyway, they were talking, though, about all the, th like, reasons, like, what is it that made rollerblading die and i don't think there's a mystery to it like they're like like well what like there's all this factor this factor this factor no the reason that rollerblading died is because they were a pain in the fucking ass they were like like i told you how i used to like uh like how i rollerbladed to school a few times like yeah well that was really fucking stupid because it's way easier to just ride your bike so they're not a good means of transportation but on the other hand, like beyond that, like, you know, when you take them to school, then you would have to take them off and then change into your shoes. OK, not that again, way better off with the bike. The only disadvantage. And then you have to lug them around school all day or stick them in your locker. Now, the bike's a pain in the ass, too. You have to you have to lock it. But still. The uh, but another thing of like about it, and I remember this came up all the time. You'd be out rollerblading and then you wanted to go get a drink, you know, or, or like go to the 7-Eleven or something. Well, guess what? You can't go in there. Because you're not allowed in there with your skates. So you have to take them off. They were a huge pain in the ass. That's why rollerblading died. That's why. You know, that, that's, it, that's it. That's as deep as it goes. Because it's not, the payoff wasn't worth it. And if you think about it, it makes a lot of sense. Because before rollerblades, there already were roller skates. And roller skates weren't widely used. Like, I mean, be, for that very reason. They were a pain in the ass. <laughs> So, like, I mean, generally, like, roller skating at its biggest was big because it was in, like, roller discos and stuff, you know, like, specialty-type things. So it makes total sense that, like, it's not really the... Que there is no question of why rollerblading died. The question is, why was it so big in the first place? It makes it makes perfect sense that, uh, you know, that, ro that you know, rollerblading, uh, you know, was a fad that, you know, shouldn't have lasted. Because, you know... One of the things I is people saying, um, I think in the video that I saw about it, he was saying, like, the biggest reason rollerblading failed is because it was a fad. And that's what fads do. They come and they disappear. Like, no, 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 no. Not like this. Not like this. Rollerblading was, I've never seen a fad like this. It was everywhere. It was so big. And then it didn't just get less popular. It essentially disappeared. Like, yeah, okay, I know it. It still exists. And it's even having a bit of a resurgence. But, like, it's not relevant, like, in the rider world at all. Whereas, you know, skateboarding was a fad. And that, you know, but it didn't disappear. It lost its fad thing. Uh, BMX biking, street BMX biking, huge fad. Uh, still exists. You know, still, you know, still exists. So, but rollerblading just vanished. Like, to the point of, like, saying, it's a fad. That excuse doesn't explain why they, they're not even in the X Games anymore. I mean, come on. Uh, although it sounds like they may come back or whatever. I don't know. Um, yeah. So, like, um, I think there were some other things I wanted to talk about, but I'll, I'll just go into this. So, like I said, you know, I was never really satisfied with how my whole skateboarding career ended. Um, I, it's only really now in hindsight, at least last, like, year or two, I've since been to see, like, it, even if there had been YouTube back then, even if I had known some guys who could have helped me learn tricks, I just don't think I could have done it. But as a kid, I really thought it was something that I just lost interest in and that if I had stuck with it, I could have gotten good. I don't think that now. But that's what inspired me uh, in that video I made what, a year ago, two years ago now, I don't remember, where I got that new skateboard. That's what inspired me to like get back into it and try it. And... Um, yeah, I'm still, I'm still pretty bad. But one thing that I noticed is I couldn't, like I said, I couldn't even do tricks then. You know, like I, I mean, I could ollie and that's it. Now I can't even ollie. Um, the, uh, but one thing that I noticed when I got out on the skateboard, like on the street, I was like, this is actually fun to just kind of ride on you know like like and i don't like when, i don't remember feeling like that when i was a kid like when i was a kid i was just interested in the tricks and but i was like just riding is just fun and pleasant and it made me think of the idea of like just kind of like where skateboarding came from which was supposed to be like surfing on land 
And that's nothing what street skateboarding is like. Street, street skateboarding, like now, you go, you watch the YouTube videos. That's not surfing on land. It's all about tricks and stuff like that. It's cool. It's cool in its own right. I'm, not, I'm, I'm all for it. But that's not surfing on land. And I still have no interest in real surfing. So I saw these things called surf skates, which are actually designed to, instead of being like this, because a normal skateboard you see is actually designed for tricks, either at the skate park or on the street. A surf skate is kind of like, you know, what's called a cruiser board, which is designed to like just be, it's more for the ride. So that would be like a surf, but, but a cruiser is not a surf skate. A surf skate has like these swinging or like elastic-y trucks that are actually supposed to be make it like surfing, except on land. In fact, I think they were even designed for training surfers on land. So I got one because like I said, like I, the tricks, I'm not going to be able to do the tricks anyway. And the only thing I really like about skateboarding is just riding it. So why not take something that's easy to ride, doesn't make that as much annoying noise. And like supposedly if you get good at a surf skate, you can keep it going without, because like the biggest problem with skateboarding is that you have to take the foot off and push off the ground to get more speed. With a surf skate, you can do this thing called pumping. So I, I can't do it, but it, supposedly it can be done where you can even go uphill and never have to push on the ground. Because you can somehow generate, just by moving your legs and body, you can generate power to go forward. I, I don't know how that would work, but whatever. I definitely see, you can see videos on YouTube of people doing it. So that inspired me to get this one, which I think is even cooler than the one I showed you guys those year or two ago. And here's the back. It's very, you know, you can see it's very like 1970s style theme. And that's the thing is like, I've noticed that I don't even really enjoy watching the, uh, street skateboarding tricks you know it's just like it just doesn't do anything it leaves me cold you know like I, it would have been really interesting back when i was in seventh grade but i do enjoy watching the skateboarding from like the 70s or even even the 80s when they were kind of they still had that sort of 70s surfer style like i mean they generally didn't do anything like they weren't doing any tricks but it was just like it's just so like smooth just seeing the flow and that's you know what interests me now is just like the flow because you know thing is like to be, uh, to do tricks, you need talent, but anybody can, anybody can cruise. So that's where, that's where I am with that. Um, yeah, so that's what happened to rollerblading. I really feel like there were some other points I wanted to make. Like I said, I, I told you, I warned you guys at the beginning that this video wasn't going anywhere. That's all for now. See you in the next.